Uh, before we, we chat about the, the things coming up this year, I, I'd love to get your thoughts on um, the execution of your, your officials from last year. Obviously, we want to start on, on a positive and, and set the scene. Obviously, for everybody involved, it ended a lot earlier than they wanted. Uh, what are some of the highlights and takeaways from you and the, the officiating crew and in terms of how uh, the previous season? You know, th and thanks again, Graham, for having me on. I appreciate this very much. Uh, last year was a good year for us. I feel like um, with our growth, our younger guys, were, uh, we got off to a good start. Uh, as the season progressed, um, a lot of those younger guys came into their own, you know, like players, right? You know, we started to get some uh, good games out of them, some consistency. I, I felt like um, our senior people that we have uh, helped out a lot with the growth of those younger guys. And we had a good – we were going in the playoffs well. You know, we, we have – we use a fourth official system – um, from a playoff perspective, we were, we were cruising along really well. I, you know, obviously with COVID shutting everything down, I thought we were at a pretty good place. I think our league, from a player safety, player development, player understanding of what we want on the ice was, was, was well received. You know, uh, you know, our second year with the player development and on, on the player safety side. So I think it was healthy that way as well. Our suspensions were way down, you know, from the year before. Um, and I thought that our players bought into, uh, you know, a lot of things that we want to see in the BC Hockey League. So it was a good year all around, I would say, until it shut down. Uh, what has the offseason been like for you and the communications and, and how um, you're bringing your team, your, your officials, uh, into 2020-2021 uh, with obviously new guidelines that uh, none of us were necessarily expecting? Yeah, you know, I think like everybody, Graham, when it all happened in the, in March, um, I think we all had to take a step back to see where we were going to head. You know, I think as a as a you know as, not as a country but as a world, you know, I mean, we were all trying to figure out how we're going to manage this. I think there was two or three months there where we were pretty uncertain of what was going to happen. Um, I think coming into June and then we started to get a little bit of momentum with the BC Hockey League and where we were headed. Um, I feel like uh, that we got uh, connected with our ownership, our governors, our coaches, you know, uh, and I think that was really positive. And then with our officials, we started to go with communication with, uh, uh, you know, on ice procedures, the stuff we just chatted about with BC hockey. Uh, there are some COVID changes at ice level. So for example, uh, on, when the whistle goes now in these exhibition games and into our season, uh, it means automatically the players must separate. No question, they have to separate right away. Um, another thing we have to do is our officials are wearing the gator masks on the ice, okay? Uh, things like small things like linesmen taking the puck from the goalie, they won't do it anymore. They'll have to just grab it from the ice and the goalie will push it to them. Um, you know, so, and then obviously we have a big, you know, set up on fighting and so forth. And so we're just trying to kind of move that direction there. Brad, I'd, I'd love to get your thoughts on the scrums because, you know, scrums are a big part of the, the game. And obviously, you know, we understand without question that, the reason for the the quick separation what what are some of the things that you say to your guys to you know ensure that, that that's the case because you know it may be early on where you don't see very many scrums specifically in exhibition but uh you know how how do you sort of communicate the the sense of urgency to your to your crew to get that separated into the players and what are some of the ramifications to the players maybe coaches if if scrums like that continue to occur on a regular basis yeah, so what we did, well, we've, had we've had calls with our coaches as well, okay? So our coaches have brought, I'm being brought up to speed with our sort of focus, BC hockey focus points. Uh, when it comes to the official side of it, uh, we're going to have a zero tolerance at the beginning. So, for example, what happens now is we get a scrum in a game. There'll be a warning to both teams that the next scrum of players will result in misconducts to those players. Uh, and as you know, if a player gets two misconducts in a game, he'll get a game misconduct. So it, that's the ramifications of too many of these. Um, I, you know, I, I think the communication I sent out to our officials today will go tomorrow. We start our games. It's just, it's just going to be a zero tolerance. I, I, you know, you know, part of the game is the altercations. Part of the game is the pushing and the shoving. We get all that, but I think we have to look beyond that right now. And, and th this is the message I'm actually sending Graham. It's actually this it's, it's, and to our officials, is play hard between the whistles. Like, let them play hard between the whistles. And that's the best part. Our game is about between the whistles, right? So we drop the puck and we play hard between the whistles. The second the whistle goes, at that moment there, we're just asking you guys to separate. That's all we're asking. We're, nothing else has changed. You can still hit, you can still score goals, you can still do whatever you want. It's just we're asking you at the whistle to just separate. This has given us this chance to be on the ice, right? If we do not, if we do not conform to this, we will not be on the ice. So we're not asking a lot. It sounds like we're asking a lot, but we're actually not. I don't, as of right now, you know, so. Uh, that'll be the message, the zero tolerance. 
Speaking with Brad Lazarowicz, the director of officiating for the BC Hockey League, and, you know, there's, there's rule changes everywhere. You've got to deal with, obviously, the province, the provincial health officer. But Hockey Canada, sort of as, a, as an umbrella um, situation as well, obviously has some, some rules and, and, and regulations that, that people have to sort of comply by as well because it seems like it's a concerted effort from each group to, to make sure, as you said, that everybody gets on the ice. Is there anything coming down from, from Hockey Canada in terms of uh, rule changes or anything that you guys have to sort of keep an eye on as well, despite the fact that you've got uh, plenty on your plate already from, from the league and, and from the province? Yeah, no, there are there are a few. Uh, the one the one this year is the four minute minor for knee. So before it was a two minute minor for knee. It's now a four minute minor. It will then it kind of mirrors the slew footing double minor, right? Okay, and we also then added slew footing to our supplement. So now under an accumulation penalty, if you take say kneeing and slew footing penalties in a game, the four minute minors, three of those could result in a suspension. So we added slew footing to our supplement. Hockey Canada added the four minute minor to knee, which is in our supplement. Also, what we a little bit different change this year is uh, high sticking out of the puck into the net. So now they're using the crossbar. Before it was kind of this vague thing that Hockey Canada, whether it was shoulder or crossbar. So now it's definitely crossbar to stick. Okay. So that's a couple of the changes right there. In our supplement, we've also added the blind side hit component where you do not have to have, have head contact. Okay, so you come from the blind side, you light up a kid from the blind side, it can be called charging, interference, you know, depending if the interference is if he doesn't have the puck, charging if he has the pucks and takes more than those two or three strides. So those are the kind of significant changes that you'll see this year in our league. As I understand it as well, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, the crease play uh, is allegedly, uh, from what I understand, coming into effect very similar to what they do in double IHF situations where if somebody touches the, the blue paint, the, the play is automatically blown down. Is that something that uh, fans can expect to see and hear as they, they process through? And, and how, again, do you communicate that to your, your group to uh, make sure that they're as aware as possible? Yeah, no, it's the last thing I was going to talk about with you because I think to me it's going to be one of the most confusing, I think, components, right? Uh, so what Hockey BC has adopted is the crease violation somewhat – like the IHF, right? Okay, where a player comes through the crease, the attacking player comes through the crease, the attacking team has possession of the puck, very important part of that, okay? So the attacking player comes through the crease, he, he, he glides through the crease, the down low referee will blow the whistle when the attacking team has the puck at that same moment, right? And then the face off would come outside. They're trying to get away from any kind of contact, you know, with the crease and crease area, okay? So, you know, I think that's going to be one of the more – you're going to be doing a game, right? You're going to be broadcasting the game. Things are going to be going along great. Vernon's got the puck in the, in the you know, in Penticton zone, and all of a sudden you're going to get this tweet, right? You're going to hear the whistle, and you're going to go look around and go, I didn't see a hit. I didn't see – you know, right? And you're going to what's happened, and then you're going to have to, you know, probably come back on the replay and see at that time. So that's going to be one of the more harder, you know, applications that are going to have to, you know, you know, apply with the officials is, you know, when do we kind of – you know, lean on that as a really strict standard. Because don't forget, you're going to have that player come to the top of the crease, right? So I, the message is going to be this, is that if he comes through the crease significantly with his foot where, you know, it it's, comes into the crease, the whistle will go. Again, we're trying to teach that so that we can have less whistles and continue to have full play, yeah. Brad, we really appreciate the time. Thank you so much for doing this. We'll, we'll try to do a, a mid-season check or a regular season kickoff chat with you uh, when the time comes. We really appreciate the time. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Awesome. Thank you, Grant. Thanks for having me.